well people. The Appalachian Trail comes with a bunch of amazing people, but boy, does it come with a bunch of assholes. I'm gonna try to sit here all cool, pretending like I'm in the woods, even though there's like a sidewalk right there. Oh, I should probably make this straighter. Today I'm gonna talk about some of the not so nice people that I came across during my Appalachian Trail through hike. And you know, sometimes my subscribers get a little bit upset when I talk about negative things, but I just don't really understand that because life itself isn't really sugar-coated, at least in normal people's lives. Uh, life does what it wants to do and, and it's the same for the Appalachian Trail. The place itself is really wonderful but there are some people that are just not nice and you literally just have to go to the Appalachian Trail the Facebook group to understand that some people just don't want to be nice and so there are four instances that I can remember when it comes to my through hike where I really really was wondering like what what's going on with some of these these human beings right so yeah make sure you stay for the last one because that one really is a doozy some of these might not be considered necessarily rude but I will start with the one that's not really rude but just unusual and this was when Fox, Cheeseball, Groceries and myself we were hiking in Connecticut and if you follow my through hike through vlog or even the movie itself you remember that fox hit her head on a tree that had fallen down and was crossing the trail. Fox just didn't see that tree and she was really hunkering down and trying to hike a good pace. It was hot and she essentially hit her head. Well, she fell down to the ground. She started having seizures in her face and overall in her body. And we were pretty concerned about her well-being. Well, there's a person coming. This is gonna be so uncomfortable and so essentially there was a ridge runner that came and passed us and what was strange about it is he looked at Fox in the middle of the trail and he's like oh what happened and we're like well she hit her head he's like oh is she okay and we're like well we don't know but probably will be and so <laughs> he just moved on and that was really a strange occurrence for me because I thought Ridge Runners were meant to kind of help out. I mean, he did ask if she was okay, but he pretty much didn't seem like he cared at all and just kept moving on. The second instance of a really strange and peculiar and really quite honestly rude person was, I even don't remember what state it was, and I don't even remember the name of the place, but it was like a, a hostel, I think. I say I think because it was more like a garden shed that they offered for people to sleep in. They did have a little bit of resupply. We didn't stay there for overnight. We just went there during a day that was extremely rainy. It was so cold and we just went there to maybe eat like a frozen pizza or you know something. So we hiked about maybe a, a quarter mile off trail to get to the shed and there was a young gentleman who took care of us with regard to some of the resupply. But then the young man's dad, uncle or something showed up and he was super weird. He walked around, he looked at us kind of like suspiciously. He was always moseying around and really having that aura of just uncomfortability. Anyway, I was freezing like a lot and I was very, very wet and they happened to have a heater that I saw and I plugged it in and I started heating my hands on this heater. Eventually this guy shows up and saw me heating my hands on this heater and he's like, he grumbled to himself, he didn't enjoy that I used this heater and then eventually he just took it, he unplugged it without saying anything and took it away from me. It was very strange that for somebody who's supposedly 
trying to help out hikers. It really seemed like he was more wanting to profit from the hikers and not provide any sort of comfortability. And I would have paid for the electricity if, if that was his concern, or, but he pretty much just took it away and just looked at me kind of like, I dare you to try to plug it in again. So that was the second instance of it just being a very strange, strange encounter. Okay, so my third example really portrays a, a rude hiker. And this is a through hiker, at least I think it was a through hiker. But again, it entailed a day of being an extremely rainy day, super cold. Rainy is one problem, but when it involves really freezing temperatures, it's probably one of the worst things that you can experience as a hiker. And we got to this shelter to, it was the end of the day, we got to the shelter and there was a guy who had hung a, like, a, is it a guy line? From, from one side to the other side of the shelter, but at the entrance. So it wasn't like just over his part of where he was sleeping. It was literally the whole entrance, kind of like as if somebody would just put a tarp on the entrance. He put a guy line from the one side to the other side. And I was like, that's really cool. So I asked him, would you be okay if we could also hang some of our wet clothes on this? And he said, no, I, would, I do not want you to do that. It's my guy line. I was like, okay. I felt it was pretty rude, but I said, okay, well, I mean, it is his guy line. And if that's what he wants, then there you go. What ended up being even worse is that he started to put all of his wet clothes on this line and it covered the entire entrance. So he essentially started hanging his underwear right in front of me. I was literally sitting there on the side of the shelter and he started hanging it right in my face. And I don't understand this man and his thought process on why that would be okay and, uh, and why it would be okay to take over the entire shelter and why it would be okay to hang your underwear. Like it was long underwear, you know, like that sleeping underwear. Why you would want to hang that into another woman's face. It just was super weird, super rude and just not a nice experience at all. And my fourth and final story of rude people on the Appalachian Trail. Some of you may or may not remember happened in the Smoky Mountains. It was our first evening in one of the shelters in the Smoky Mountains. And the shelters in the Smoky Mountains happened to have a fireplace in it. So we started a fire and then eventually at around hike or midnight, it's usually when it starts getting dark, maybe it was 8.30, around that time, we all decided to let the fire go out slowly and go to sleep. But just about 10-15 minutes later, a bunch of other hikers, they were section hikers, but it doesn't really matter what they were section through hikers. At the time, I felt like, whoa, those section hikers, but it's not really section hikers. It could be any kind of hiker. Anyway, these guys showed up in the middle of the night and went inside of the shelter. It was a cold night, totally understand that. But what was really inconsiderate is that we were all sleeping already and they came in very loud and they were just talking and starting to cook. Now, the normal courtesy is to try to be quiet, use your red lights and just whisper and try to warm yourself up this didn't happen with these guys. They were laughing, they were eating, they were drinking alcohol, and also they were joking about, forgive my words, it's their words, iron cocks. It was really, really uncomfortable. All the other hikers that were trying to sleep were essentially a little bit afraid of these guys because they were bigger, burlier men. Nobody wanted to say anything. Anyway, I said something at one point like, hey guys, they completely ignored me and continued to make noise. Eventually, I, I did try to put uh, earplugs in, but 
as I was trying to sleep with my earplugs in, a bunch of smoke started creeping up to the top layer of the shelter. I was not able to breathe and a lot of other hikers could barely breathe. But again, we were too scared to say anything. Eventually, most of them left into their tents, but one hiker remained and continued to be loud and never used his inside voice ever. He continued to maintain the fire and eventually he left, but he let the fire just go. At some point in the middle of the night, some of the other through hikers woke up with the little pieces of ash and coal coming onto our clothes and essentially almost caught a fire. The guy had left the fire without trying to put it out as we had done previously. Anyway, we put out the fire and in the morning I was ready to get out of there. However, these guys woke up at the same time as we did. One hiker was just staring at us for some, I don't, I don't remember why, just looking at us with his creepy way. And then another hiker, and it was the one that was loud the night before, the one that just didn't have an inside voice. He continued to call us a refugee camp. I'm not somebody who gets offended at a lot of things. I am not somebody who has a problem. I'm neither here nor there on a political instance, just to, I believe in the right to bear arms, if you know what I'm talking about. But calling us a refugee camp once, okay, maybe you think it's funny, calling us a refugee camp three or four times. And A, we heard you the first time. I don't know what he was trying to say, but it was extremely, really, it was extremely rude. So we left the shelter and we decided we wanted to stay as far away from these guys as possible and try to hike on. So that's the story with regard to how rude and disrespectful these hikers were. The story isn't, wasn't really over at that point. Once my video came out of me complaining about these hikers, one of them decided to contact me via internet and he tried to justify his actions. And I respect that. I understand why you would do that. But he tried to tell me that I needed to learn a lesson, that I didn't know what hiking really meant and that I was just a greenhorn and that they had a lot more mileage under their belt than I did. I definitely have been a lot more humbled since then. And I do need to say though, that this was the worst experience for me and definitely left a bad taste in my mouth when it comes to certain types of hikers. However, so I hope you enjoyed that and I hope it gave you a little bit of an idea of what kind of people you could come across. Just like in real life, it is your choice to just take it, react on it or leave it. Our goal was to enjoy our hike and we weren't really wanting to create any sort of drama. I did feel like I needed to mention it on my videos just because it was something that was a bad experience for me. And it was my goal not to just sugarcoat everything on my trail.